Many viewers of the channel already know that I love affinity. I love just cheating out mana and just abusing artifacts. I love it in a simple way. I played in Popper, but in Modern, I recently had the affinity love kind of extinguished. We had a card like Up the Beanstalk banned away, and I think this was honestly the best version of affinity that we had in recent times, like post Mox Opal banning and everything, just because of the amount of card draw that you can get out of the deck. And I thought maybe the are uh, the you know, kind of archetype was largely dead, but with a recent top eight from a challenge, I saw that a card like Forging the Anchor could actually be a really great way to bring this back. I know obviously my card knowledge is pretty weak, so I did not know this was in the Brothers War, but essentially it's it's three mana. Look at the top five cards in your library, you reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put them in your hand for the rest of the bottom. So you can imagine in an affinity deck, this could very much be three mana, draw three to four, maybe even five cards, which is absolutely insane. Enjoy the game. Playing some affinity on the draw. I, you know what? I think this is fine. This this hand doesn't really draw well, but I mean, it poops out artifacts. I'll tell you that. It poops out artifacts. We're going to go tied, actually. We're going to go razor, razor bridge. We're going to go bridge, I think. They'll play this tapped. That's fine. Okay, we'll go Razor Bridge tapped. Yeah, we'll go Bridge tapped. And then what we can do is we can play Power Depot. We can play Power Depot second. So we have a lot of tap lands. We have a lot of tap lands. That's my problem here. And then, yeah, because like if I, yeah, if I do that now, next turn we can go like Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Welding Jar, Frogmite, Portable Hole something that they play. Mana value two or less though. So we'll see. Power Depot though, a card that like I'm genuinely not used to playing. Orcish Bowmasters, pretty solid. Yeah, pretty solid Portable Hole target. I will say that. See what we can do here. Pretty solid portable hole target. Ping me for one. Yes. Sure. Um. Yeah. So we're gonna go power depot. Springleaf drum power. Cast an ornithopter. Um, cast a frog mic because we've got four artifacts. This is a artifact land too. I didn't even read that, bro. This card is sick. Why wasn't old ver older versions of Affinity playing this? I don't know. Um, I guess they just wanted to be faster, especially with, like Beanstalk and everything. Um, we're gonna go portable hole. Might tap this. Get the bull masters, right? Uh, we don't have any more. I could just play at the welding jar. That way, if they destroy something, I can just um, I can regenerate it. Yeah, regeneration on the regeneration on the portable hole seems pretty good. <coughs> seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Shadow spear next. I could play Urza Saga. I'm not gonna be creating tokens for a hot minute. I'm gonna be creating tokens for a hot minute, but I do have. There's like a sweet cave in this deck list that we can take advantage of. Wall of Roots. That's fine. I think I'd rather just like, yeah, like if <laughs> the Bull Master is just the best target here because there is a lot of card draw that we have and we kind of need to not get punished by it. Okay, I love the Beseju being played out here. All right, opponent. What's going on? You swinging in with the army? Can't produce black, so not hitting me there. Thought Monitor. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Play out the thought monitor. Let, let's start things off with a bang. Drawing some cards. Okay. Well, well, bang, well, bang. All right. Saga comes out. We're going to Shadow Spear. Right? We're going to play the Shadow Spear. We are going to cast Memnite. Right. Then what we're going to do. I think what we do is actually hit the Ornithopter, maybe. Create. 
Let's equip for two on the... Get for two on the Ornithopter. Right, and then... Tap this. Yeah, sorry, I was like, what? Use that mana, use that mana. Go to combat. Attack. Attacking through the wall of roots is is useless, but I mean, I, I could have put it on the frog mine and gained some lifelink, but like it would have been gaining more life. But I think just confirming more damage in the air is important here because there are going to be there are going to be turns here where if they don't have the infinite combo and the Yogmothas, they have to pay one life to start like distributing counter counters on stuff, right? So. Even if we're able to like peck away at their life, being at more life isn't important. Isn't being at more life than them is only important if they're actually losing life. I think. I I, I think that's how we generally want to approach this matchup. And then now they're gonna just start pinging our stuff down. Um. Fulminator Mage, you're killing me. You're killing me in the main board. I guess that's gonna kill the Saga. But we do have a land that's going to be able to take advantage of that. So, like, uh, we uh, we do have a land that is going to be able to take advantage of that uh, kind of coming in. So let's see what we draw. We're, we're in top deck mode. Uh, Ginger Brute's kind of nice. Uh, we'll play this out. And then we will tap one to make this unblockable. Go to combat. Attack. Really just, yeah, just start, just start swanging in the air. Just start swanging in the air. This time though, I mean, uh, I could have played the Spire here, but I think we have enough lands where we can just bluff something. I think, I think we can just bluff the fact that we have a counter spell. That's why I didn't want to play the Spire. Here, this spreads out more damage. I probably could have just spent the extra i don't know i it's the thing is i wanted to bluff the counter spell just make them think we have it um next turn what i can do is i can then put the the shadow spear onto the ornithopter um and then just start swinging that way frogmite um okay i think i think i want to switch this uh... Okay, so we're going to equip onto here. One, two. Equip onto the thought monitor. And just start gaining more life that way. You need a combat, sorry, make this unblockable. And then attack. Just start gaining some more life this way. Um, I think the welding jar is honestly doing a lot for us here. They're also not drawing too well. They're not drawing terribly well. So generally, we can regenerate something here. Endurance. Okay. Yep, yep. The... the th Freaking 3-4 body. Uh, yeah. The 3-4 body is unfortunate. Yep. Shuffle your stuff back in. How are you going to block? Obvious opponent. All right. Okay, we're going to regenerate this. I would like this to not die. Yeah, I would like that to not die. We're going to play out the Frogmite. All right. Uh, endurance having re... Like, I'm telling you. Wizards of the Coast. Modern Horizons 3. Oh. Modern Horizons 3. I can't wait. Let me tell you, I can't wait. <laughs> Just... I, I can't wait. I, I can't wait. This is definitely going to be a matchup that I think I'm going to struggle with. This is, this is going to be a tough matchup. This is going to be a tough matchup. Portable hole is is kind of nice. Uh, it's unfortunate they had the Bowmasters, but I mean, it's a four of, so it's fine. All right, four mana. You playing the Yawgmoth now? There you go. This is this is pretty much where my board just disappears. But 
like my board disappears they like ping everything right like the, the memnite dies yeah yeah the ginger brute is a good hit ginger brute dies can't activate it the life gain is a tap ability they're at 10 see like they had to lose a life to do that right and 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 that's what's important here um like getting them low that's what's important here oh baby a triple oh <laughs> baby all right let's go let's go that's it right there that that's the that's the one uh i don't want to make it active only if you control an artifact okay so we're gonna go one two oh baby let's go let's play <laughs> opponent not a fan of that one opponent not a fan of that one uh we're gonna go to combat they can't they can't block both but they can pay one and start putting minus one minus one on stuff that's fine they'll lose some life begin combat attack <clears throat> Bang bang. Mm, or should we attack all? Should we attack all? We could very much, we could very much just attack all here. I have to sack another creature. They can save this. I'm wondering if I just attack all here. No, I need one creature up. That's the thing. I need at least like one creature up. So I think no. See, then the Yogma trades with that pretty well. Let's attack with both of these. It might be better to attack with thing. Okay. So I'm still going to cranial plating this to save this. I'm still going to cranial plating this. Yeah, I'm still going to cranial plating this. Um, we're going to create black. Right, pay one life. I'm still going to plating this. They can dump their resources into killing this thing if they want, but I'm going to gain my life. The cranial plating top deck, absolutely god tier. Absolutely god tier. The trample is insane too. <laughs> the tramp, the trample is what's key here, right? Like they're at four toughness. The trample is what's key here. Yeah, they they have to shrink this. They have to shrink this. But they lose a life. It doesn't matter. Opponent, you have to lose a life. You have to like kill this. Essentially, you have to do this now. Yeah, you have to kill this. Yeah, you have to kill this thing. Cause it's only plus one plus oh but you gotta lose your board to do this you're taking some amount of damage which is which is great that's what i want um and unfortunately i can't i can't equip again that's gonna swing in for zero so the endurance is dead and the young wolf is gone which is great all right fantastic so that's coming at you next turn opponent that, that's coming at you next turn so okay green green what do you got for green green you have like a Besaju probably. I'll happily look for a basic then out the deck. They'll they'll take the cranial plating. They might actually take. Oh, they're gonna cord for three? Cord for two? Cord for two. Cord for two brings in a bowmasters? You gonna or Hapatra? Hapatra's a good one. Yeah, Hapatra's a good cord here. Just like distribute some one one counters. If we were playing like a Gal Blast version of this deck, ooh baby, ooh baby, we'd be able to punish this. The, the the activation on this being one life is is such a tricky thing here for our opponent. But opponent, yeah, Hapatra. It's a good call. It's a good call. They can wipe out our board like pretty dang well here. Yep. Yep. 
Burning Catacomb. Yep. A lot of, lot of mana. Ooh. Okay. Hold on now. Hold on now. All right. Sack the Wall of Roots. Okay. Yes. You gain some life. Do you, can can you thug it out with the young wolf right now? Can you thug it out with some with some undying triggers? Opponent, can they can they say as we say in the business? Can they thug it out? Blood artist is a big problem. I will say that blood artist is is quite the quite the problem. They don't have any reach right now either. It's kind of like the big problem for them. Okay. All right, minus one, minus one counter. Yes, activate. Yes, 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 yes. Opponent, thinking deep in their thoughts right now. Did they misclick on the wall of roots or something? I don't even know. I feel like they could have generated two mana. They created like one. This is a pretty sweet blood artist, um, blood artist art. I like this. Little blood vials. Vanya Falconrot's paintings are astonishing. How does she manage to achieve such rich crimson hues? Well, 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 you know, for, for us breaking the fourth wall, I think it's pretty obvious how, uh, how, um, was it Vanya gets, gets those crimson hues. Three mana. What are you playing for three? Opponent doing so much, so much thought. Going into this game right now. What are they playing? Evolution. So you get to go up. So you're getting another two mana thing. Okay. They sack the token. So they get Young Wolf. Okay. Does this combo? I think this only works with like. I think this only works with another Young Wolf. I think I'm pretty sure you need another Young Wolf for this. I actually haven't been comboed out by Yogmoth in a hot minute. I've just been mid-ranged out. I'm like pretty sure this only works with... Oh, actually, no. Because you keep like... Because it comes in with a plus one. Then you add a minus one. Yeah, you create a snake. They're pretty much going to wipe my board. I don't have anything like... I don't know how I draw out of this. I could portable hole like one of these things. But then they pretty much just drain me out. Like they put a minus one here. Right? They pretty much like it pretty much just works out this way. They put they pay one, they put a minus one, they drain. I, I don't know. This is just this is just so much, so much effort. I should have just timed my opponent out, honestly, but like, yo, I don't I don't have three years to play magic. Like anyway. Um no metallic rebukes really. Dispatch. Dispatch and portable hole are probably what I want here. There's a lot of good targets. Graph Digger's Cage. Tormod's Crypt. There's a lot of good targets here. Uh, maybe it's not even Portable Hole that I want. Maybe I just go three for three on that. On the Dispatches straight up. Shadow Spear is cute. Expedition Map. Maybe not. I could drop like... They're going to destroy my stuff. Like Welding Jar is like a little bit less powerful because of that I took out yeah I took out an expedition map like one more card and I think these are the cards that I bring in maybe not the pithing needle but like pithing needle I can name some good stuff with pithing needle not gonna lie I can name some good stuff patchwork automaton's really good um ginger brew just kind of dies we'll just run it like this I don't even know if we bring in the if I'm supposed to bring in metallic rebuke there's a lot that's good here this just generally feels like probably not one of our better matchups. Um, this patchwork automaton is probably the best threat that we can that we can make here. Um, I'm gonna keep this just off the automaton. It's probably the best threat that we can make, and I'm gonna wait to hold. I'm gonna hold on to my spells because of that. Actually, I may not. Okay, so I'm gonna play drum. I will play drum because drum. Drum allows me to play like two artifacts the turn after. Um, 
Like I can go first pithing needle on Grist or do I go first pithing needle on, I don't know. It's, I think I'm pretty, pretty sure I named Grist. Pithing needle on Verdant Catacomb. If, hmm. Okay, so they maul. Uh, we're gonna go drum. And then I'm gonna save, um, I'm gonna save these being cast for it to up my automaton. Yeah, I'm gonna save those for being cast. So I can name Grist and that way, like, they pretty much like every time they, they hit my automaton, they have to pay a bunch of mana. And then I can just put it up high enough where like that's not valuable to them. I think that's the general idea. Honestly, the bravest move would have been Pithing Needle on Verdant Catacombs. That would have been... That would have been... <laughs> that would have been the absolute middle finger move. That would have been the meme. All right, Young Wolf. Young Wolf, not Old Wolf. Not Medium, not Middle Age Wolf. Just a very, very young one. Um, we're going to go... That's actually pretty fun. I'm a fan. So I have to go Saga here. Yeah, I have to go Saga here. Then what I do is I play... Urza Saga, Triggered Ability. Opponent, just very conceited. Honestly, I should have just let my opponent time out. Because they were they were taking years to do everything. I probably got could have gotten to like 10 minutes. Like, you need to be able to play faster. But I guess they're learning this deck too. So, Bobble, Patrick Trigger. Yep. Uh, so I only have four artifacts. Can't really get this down like low enough at this point. So we're going to go uh, Pithing Needle. And then name Grist. Grist the Hunger Tide. Right. And then we will bobble you. Trying a Yog Moth. That's fine. They're not doing that like anytime soon. I still got time. This is, and this automaton is just gonna grow. Yep, power depot. Um, the problem is I can't really attack with the automaton because I kind of need to like create tokens. Like these tap lands are actually like really annoying. <laughs> and they're gonna ugh, see if they go this pass, I'm not gonna create a thought. I'm not gonna play thought monitor. I'm not letting them like. I'm not letting them like get a free thing. Playing Bowmasters out now. Okay, Wall of Roots. Sure. Okay, there's a Saga trigger. Another drum is nice, actually. I will say that. Um. Yeah, this is kind of awkward. So I have to. I think. I think I should get my value out of this, or I should thought monitor. Honestly, I probably should thought monitor. Um, because I can go mm, one, two, three, four, five. I have to like tap out to do this. Is that even worth it? One out, like one in Rome, one in Rome, one, and then two. Just create my artifact count. That's probably just better. I have a threat this way, and the next turn. Saga doesn't get portable hole. It's got to specifically have a one. And then I could tutor for Shadow Spear. It's a good option. Tutor for Shadow Spear. Put it on the Patchwork of Tamaton. Start just casting stuff. Um, I could use the Construct token to create another token, which I think is good. I think just like going tall is probably pretty good against a deck that just wants to put a bunch of one, one minus one minus one counters on me and then just start swinging in that way um and then we could go hmm. trying to think do they not have a land oh that's a huge that's a huge stumble so i think i'm gonna create another token Patrick Automaton's not that big. Let, let that, let that like just keep growing. Right. Uh, we'll let that go. And then now really what this is about is I think, I think I'll grab a second Pithing Needle. 
So I could grab the Shadow Spear, but I think I can grab a second Pithing Needle and then choose Yawgmoth. Brand Physician, right? Then what we do is play Power Depot, play Memnite, right? And then we just, I just want to like grow this, uh, grow this patchwork as much as possible, right? And they'll, they'll obviously trump the Construct token, that's fine. They'll bring back the Young Wolf, but we have Grist, like they could definitely like Beseju, uh, one of my Pithing Needles, but I think that's fine. Yep. Go the automaton to some ungodly number. The ward two is actually like really good here. And then what I can do is construct thought monitor. Just maximize the amount of artifacts that I have on this battlefield right now. They could they could um orcish bowl masters me here. Okay. Um Okay, play the yeah, play the sojourner's companion to just max out the amount of artifacts that I'm getting out. Um, and this just kind of puts the fear into them. They'll they'll chump the construct token, which is fine. But this puts that fear into them, right? Like, look at how wide my board is, and look at how tall. Like the double construct token, just being that tall, is is genuinely huge. So why didn't they? What? I actually like quite literally don't understand. Okay. Um... <laughs> Looks like the clock plan was an actual strategy because our opponent might be a little newer. They might have they might have just passed through, honestly. They might have just passed through, but yeah, they, they might have just passed through that trigger. It seemed like they didn't, though. I don't know. I don't know. We got a pretty crazy board here. There's like there's a there's a four mana sorcery in here that I really want to like get out. There's a four mana sorcery. Where is it? I just I just actually tweeted about it. Where is it? It's forging the anchor. So it's blue, blue and two for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You can reveal any number of artifacts from among them and put them into your hand, put the rest of your bottom. So it's essentially like really most of the time it's like three mana draw four or five. It's like most of the time it's like, okay, maybe not most of the time five, but it's three mana draw three or four most of the time, which is like really good, which is really good. Like, sure, you may draw a bunch of lands and everything, but like just drawing raw cards is uh, is is pretty good. So they found their land They're gonna Eldritch Evolution. They're going to Evolution Exus 2 for a Yawgmoth, uh, Shieldred. Shieldred also works. I don't know how much longer Shieldred's going to work for them, but this is kind of where. Yeah, I mean, look, I still stand by like Pithing Needle on the Yawgmoth. Shieldred is definitely a way for them to grind out, but I mean, these construct tokens are absolutely massive. Um, so is the patchwork automaton. So they're going to have to start taking some hits there. And yeah, they're going to gain some life off the Shieldred. But I also have to remember that they technically have two mana here with the Wall of Roots. Very deceptive board. All right, opponent, let me draw. Let me draw my cards. Let me draw my cards. And what's great about the card that I just mentioned, um, Forging the Anchor, is you're just like putting it in your hand. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, all right. That's, uh, yeah, there you go. That that removes the urgency from them. Yup. Yeah, Force of Vigor is a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, Cast the Frog might... Right, and then what we gotta do here is really just just start swinging. Like, we gotta just—I mean, that thing has death touch. Ah, it doesn't matter. You know what? Just start swinging. It does not matter. I, I have to just start swinging. I should have swung with the thought monitor too, but yeah, they'll chomp. They'll chomp twice here. I need a. I have slowed them down. Like they, they have a Yawgmoth in hand, right? They have a Yawgmoth in hand. They can't use the Yawgmoth. If I can find like, I'm not going to play this, play this land. I'm going to make them think I have something. They're playing the land has zero value here. Um, okay. So they draw a card. They have a Yawgmoth in hand and it's dead. They have an overgrown tomb. They have nothing else. They can play out the Yawgmoth, but they can't activate its abilities. Thanks to, um, thanks to the Pithing Needle, which is nice. Um, protection from humans is one thing. 
Um, this thing, I will, like, if this, oh, I was going to say, if this shouldn't swing with Shieldred, I will, like, block a bunch, uh, just to kill it. That is going to be worth it for me, because they're going to start grinding me out here. Um, yep. Yes. Go to combat. Attack. I honestly should have just, yeah, I should have swung with this last turn, but, well. Because this essentially just makes it so they're like, they're not like gaining. Uh, like they're kind of going neutral. No blocks. You're just going to take the hits. Okay. Uh, we're going to bobble now. This actually bobbling now might not have been good. Well, that's a really good draw. Like for us, that's really, that like does nothing. That's a fantastic draw. I was going to say I should have Mishra's bobbled on their upkeep, but that's fine. Okay, so not great, um, but I do need a thought, but I do need to like draw cards to find an answer. Honestly, if I did not Pithing Needle the Yawgmoth here, I was taking it out. So if I have to lose to Shieldred, like, all right, you know? Yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna block here. Would it, why? Okay. Why though? Okay. Why? 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 Yo, the top deck is insane. Yo, the top deck is crazy. It's unhinged. Oh, 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 the top deck is crazy. It is unmatched. The top deck is galactic like it just earth shattering like yo it's actually crazy yeah i will definitely um yeah the top deck is actually like galactic um we're gonna we're gonna lose some life and that's perfectly fine holy the top deck is insane Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to make me lose some life. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> what I'm going to do is exile your children and gain 50,000 life. That's the plan. That's the plan right now. So have fun opponent. Soulless jailer, just like off the, just, you know, just going to be pure pure good stuff oh okay well all right i have to use okay so first of all let's just equip this onto this right i, I want to gain a ton of life even if um and then we're gonna go white and then white tap this right that's the activated ability on that we're gonna dispatch on this sucker white tap this exiled opponent ggs so that should be game that should be the game pretty much like they have to double block to like get to one essentially i think it's like one yeah yeah they have to like double block to get to one and then uh yeah that's that's the game opponent I'm, I'm back at 19 the top deck was actually galactic holy the top deck was was astronomical actually insane okay let's go to yeah i mean we just run it back we just run it back the removal turns out it was good I don't know. I, I guess I could be playing portable hole. But like, what do I remove? Like, actually, what do I remove? I don't know. Do I remove the cranial platings? Like, I don't know. I could be I could be boarding against this bad. I really just wanted to play this because of the card draw. So the options that, that they now have. hand i mean it's got the patchwork automaton and the forging 
Yeah, I'll, I'll run this just off of that. Fortunately, it's not really helping our artifact count for the Sojourner's Companion. But... I hate that. Um, Okay. I might just play out the Shadow Spear then. See if they, like, get baited into exiling it. Come on. My land base doing this to me is insane. My land base doing this to me is insane. It will turn artifacts though. I will say that. Okay. Pendlehaven. Yes. Swing for... God damn it. <laughs> Swing for two. I'm like, am I playing against Infect right now? Alright, they'll hold that up. That's fine. Ornithopter, play the Urza Saga, right? We'll get a counter on it. I will do this. And then what I'll do is I will play the Ornithopter, increasing its counters by one. Now you must pay three total mana if you wish to Haywire Might this. Oh, it's non-creature though. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, So they can they can like ping out my lands, which is perfectly fine. Just gonna have to take the L on that if they do, but yeah, Dryad Arbor. Okay. So I got three artifacts right now. No swang in from our opponent. No swang in. Triggered ability. Play the Urza Saga. Um, I'm gonna play the Pithing Needle here. Right? Opponent. Hey, Wire Might. Gotta force the action. You can't take the Patchwork Automaton. You're probably taking one of my lands. Um, and I'm specifically holding up this one. Yeah, and this is... Oh, you're holding... Oh, you're taking the Shadow Spear. Uh, sure. All right. Um, I'm actually going to name Yogmoth here. I'm actually going to name Yogmoth. Um, we're going to go to combat. One, two, three. How much does this cost? Four? Yeah. Attack. Um, yeah, attack for three. We're gonna name Yogmoth off the Pithing Needle. They can't destroy it this turn. Okay, damage to them. Next turn we lose our Saga, but I will probably get probably get like the the artifact making, like the mana making, uh, the the drum. I'll probably grab a Springleaf Drum off the first Saga because I need to play the Sojourner's Companion, and then I need, I just need to like flood my board and play Forging Forging the Anchor. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I was worried about, but they, but they can't really, like... Yeah, like, they can do that, but they can't really do much else, yeah. I'm wondering if I create... Let's see what we draw. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a thing here, right? And then we will grab a Springleaf Drum, right? I shouldn't always yield, actually. That's a lie. I shouldn't always yield. Um, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six off of that. And then seven off the land. I can play Sojourner's Companion. And then just start, like, swinging into this. These don't have Death Touch, but... I think maybe the other playing the other saga is probably good. I can just keep developing, making more constructs. Yeah, let's do this. Right. And then I can one actually undo. Let's just make sure. So let's do this. And then we go one. Like tap the ornithopter. Cast that. Yep. And then go to combat. Attack. Attack the Grist. Because we need to start threatening that thing. 
Chris dies. Okay, do they have another one? I guess. I hope, like, I hope for their sake they have another one. I honestly, look at the time that they have. I should have timed them out. Like, this is, like, absolutely insane. I should have conceded turn one or, like, game one, but oh well. Sub five minutes, opponent. Let's see what you got. They had another one. That's fine. They still can't pay to kill this, which is probably their biggest problem. Yep. And then, so you're going to sack that. What do you, yeah, you're going to kill the construct. That makes sense. Oh. Um, I'm still going to swing at the Gris. Yeah, put that up. I'm going to create another construct. Right. Grab. Hmm. Do I still grab Springleaf Drum? Or do I grab Cage? Cage might be hot. Because then they can't... Yeah, Cage actually might be good here. Because then they can't, like, tutor. Um, Let that come up. Yeah, Cage actually might be good here. We can go Spire Bluff. Uh, I can't play Forge, right? Yeah, I can't play Forge. Yeah, this way they can't cord. The Grafdigger's Cage makes it so they can't cord. And then what we do is we attack the Grist. Attack the Grist. Uh, make it so it doesn't live. I don't want it to live. That's the big thing. I don't want it to live. I've dealt with the Yawgmoth here. I don't have Trample on either one of these. Um, and then next turn, next turn, we can do some crazy stuff. Like we can play forge and pretty much like that turn, we have the potential to just draw six cards. Like we draw one off our draw and forge anchor could literally just draw us like five cards, um, based on how many artifacts we reveal. So let's see what happens here. Four mana from our opponent, blood artist out, not going to do much, just a blocker. Uh, it's not looking too good for our opponent right now. Not looking too good. Um, I might actually just let this one go. I don't know how many of these I want to create, especially because of the mana commitment here. So I think I'm just going to create a mana, right? Especially for the mana commitment. Um, I'm going to get Pithing Needle. I'm going to get Pithing Needle and name like Haywire Might. Yeah, I don't, I don't want them to top deck that. I'm going to name Haywire Might. Then what I'm going to do is... F oh, I shouldn't have played that. I should have waited, but... I uh, use this... Blue... Tap that. Oh, I should have made a color. I, I, there's no point in me losing a life there. Uh, but that's great. Put all these into my hand. Play a Mem Knight. Pretty much, we're just going to go for a massive, massive win here. Uh, the cranial plating is like really nice, but can't really equip it based on my mana right now. Can I? I can I can pay two mana, so probably not. Let's not do that. Blue and one. Draw more. This is this is what a this is affinity right here. This is the good stuff. See, I could have just played that for a land, um, and then we just go to combat. And we just attack. This is affinity right here. This is the this is the insane stuff. We're gonna go in for combat. Opponent pretty much like can't do a lot here. Can't do a lot. Um, they can't cord for anything. Like they let that trigger go. Yeah, they can't cord for anything. I'm gonna take twelve. Yep. You'll be able to soft like some weird lifelink, but that's fine. So pass through there. And this is a board you have to deal with, opponent. It's a board you have to deal with. Opponent. Making moves, making moves. The amount of time we've spent in this game is crazy. I've spent, you know what? I will say that I've spent a lot of time in this game too. So uh, yeah, that's GG. I mean, they don't know I have the cranial plating, but... 
So it, it's about to get nasty. It's about to get nasty. Yeah. All right. Um, opponent's got nothing. Yeah. Cause they realize like, even, even if I just attack all doesn't happen. All right. Affinity. It's good. It's good. You saw, you know, the, the, the forging the anchor was, was pretty solid there. Like three mana, draw four cards, three or four cards. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. GG's.